So I was pretty excited today to hear that the president was going to address the opioid epidemic, but then I heard what he actually said. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So today I got a bunch of messages, I got a bunch of tweets, I got texts, and people were saying, hey Chris, you know that the president's talking about the opioid epidemic today? I'm like, sweet, that's awesome, I'm gonna check it out. But then I saw what he actually said and I was not too happy. Politics aside, I went into this thing extremely optimistic. I just did a video a couple weeks ago talking about how the Trump administration is going after the opioid epidemic. But it seems like some people in his cabinet are going into different directions. So before talking about what Trump said, I think it's better summed up by talking about what Jeff Sessions has been doing. So Jeff Sessions is under this idea that in order to stop the opioid crisis, we need to bring back the D.A.R.E. program. Did I just say D.A.R.E.? Yes, I just said D.A.R.E. The program with the wonderful cartoon lion and those cheesy rap songs that they used to have with Yogi the Bear and stuff back in the 80s and early 90s. Yes, they're talking about putting billions of dollars back into that program. Why is that crazy? Well, let's take a look at the 2001 Surgeon General's report, which states, D.A.R.E.'s popularity persists despite numerous well-designed evaluations and meta-analyses that consistently show little or no d deterrent effects on substance abuse. So after about a decade of the D.A.R.E. program, the Surgeon General came out and said, this thing isn't helping. It's not doing anything. More studies show this. They said multiple studies point to a boomerang effect in which those who completed the D.A.R.E. program were more likely to engage in illicit drug use. This is also true. This isn't something that happened to me personally, but it's something that I know happened to a lot of people. They went through D.A.R.E. and they were like, hmm, those drugs actually sound kind of cool. It didn't happen to me because I grew up with an alcoholic mom. I never wanted to try drugs in the first place or alcohol, but look what happened. Anyways, one of the reasons the D.A.R.E. program is so ineffective is because it centers around scare tactics, telling kids that drugs are bad. Quit telling us that drugs are bad. We know drugs are bad. Sometimes when I'm doing groups, I ask the people in the room, I say, how many of you in here are here for heroin? And they raise their hands. How many of you are here for meth? They raise their hands. I ask them beforehand, I say, did you not know that heroin and meth were bad for you? And they laugh. Like, of course they knew it was bad for them, but they did it anyways. The question is why? So the issue that I take with what Jeff Sessions was talking about in his speech about the D.A.R.E. program is that he started off on fire. He was talking about the opioid crisis being because of prescription drugs. He started going into the statistics. And just so you know, the United States prescribes 81% of the world's entire supply of opioids. That is bonkers. Then he goes on to say that every day, 5,000 new people are introduced to opioids. That's bananas, right? So when he starts off like this, you're thinking, okay, here we go. Jeff Sessions just said, we prescribe opioids too much. 5,000 people a day are trying opioids for the first time. We're gonna start talking about doctors in the pharmaceutical industry. And then he just uh, switches gears and he gets back to this idea that we need to start criminalizing drug use again. This is insane. More studies have proven that criminalizing drug users is not the answer. He goes on and he talks about locking up more and more drug dealers. I'm 100% on board with that. There's a ton of drug dealers out there who are not drug addicts. They're just doing it strictly for the profit. I'm all for locking those people up. But when we start talking about locking up drug addicts, this is not effective. It is proven to not be effective many, 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 many times. The problem is, is that we're, we're punishing people who have a legitimate illness. It just doesn't work. When Donald Trump addressed the nation today, talking about the opioid ed epidemic, he literally talked for just a few minutes. And he said, it's a crisis, people are dying, this is bad. And then he just says, if people don't do drugs in the first place, then they won't become addicts. And it's like, well, yeah, that's true. When Jeff Sessions was talking, he was talking about treatment being ineffective. 
This is crazy because he mentions that and he talks about it for a little bit, but when we're talking about the D.A.R.E. program and making the focus on this, locking people up and the D.A.R.E. program, what are we doing with everybody who is already addicted? What are we doing with those people? What are we doing with the people who have been struggling with addiction for five, 10, 15 years? What are we doing with the people who are already addicted? They're not talking about that at all. My guess is probably because it doesn't fit into their new healthcare plan. That's just what I'm saying. If you look at the healthcare plan, they're talking about reducing the coverage for people who struggle with mental illness and people who have addictions. So they're pretty much pushing those people to the side and saying, let's start talking to kids from ages kindergarten to 12th grade, which is nuts. So when we're talking about the actual solutions, because here at The Rewired Soul, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solutions. First, we need to talk about the medical industry. We have to, absolutely have to. If you ask most heroin addicts how they got hooked on heroin, most of them are gonna tell you it's because they were prescribed opioids. We have people who got an injury playing a sport. We have people who have had surgeries. We've had people who've had teeth extracted. All these things. We are just making it rain opioids on people and it's nuts. The problem is that we're over prescribing them and we're not giving people a solid plan for getting off of them. Now, I will give Jeff Sessions credit, but not too much credit because he only talked about it for like a second. Like rather than talking about a new bill or how they're gonna be harder on doctors and pharmaceutical industries for their practices, all he said was, how about instead of prescribing 67 Oxycontin, how about we prescribe 10 instead like that's a great idea but what are you doing to actually enforce that now this is a subject that's very very personal to me when i was in my active addiction and my primary drug of choice is opioids i know i know what goes down it was so easy it was so easy for me to play doctors and get opioids one is because they just want me to get out of their office. They want me to leave them alone. So you go to an emergency room, they just want to get you out of there and they will write you a script and tell you to leave. And it's terrible. But one of the things that I would do was I would take advantage of emergency rooms and doctors all the time. There was one time in specific that I can remember where while my son and my son's mother were sleeping, I went to a 24 hour hospital through my insurance company. I went in there and said, hey, I have a migraine and Excedrin isn't working. Can you give me this? And they're like, sure, and gave it to me. Like that's nuts, I should not be able to do that. I will say that this was a little over five years ago, so maybe things have gotten a little bit better. I know in some states there are. But here's the other problem. At two years sober, two years sober, I got into a car accident. I went to the emergency room. Luckily, I didn't break any bones. I wasn't bleeding internally or anything. It was just a lot of bumps and bruises, and I just went there to get checked out. The first thing I did as a recovering opiate addict, I went up to them and I said, listen, I cannot take any narcotic medications. I am a recovering pill popper. And they gave me a wristband, they gave me a bracelet that said, I cannot take these medications. The doctor offered me opiates four times. Not one, not two, not three, but four times. I turned them down each time. When I discharged, they sent me off with a prescription for opiates. This is what we need to be talking about. We need to be talking about how we are prescribing the medications. We can sit here and talk about the drugs coming in from Mexican cartels and we're gonna build a wall all day long. But when the reality is that they're smuggling heroin and most people who want the heroin got started from getting prescribed medications, that's the issue. So we need to start looking at the medical and pharmaceutical industries and how we are prescribing these medications. The next solution is that we need to start looking at how we are teaching kids about mental health. So like I was saying, just scaring kids out of drug use isn't enough. We need to start teaching kids how to take care of their mental health in the same exact way that we're teaching them to take care of their physical health. Because 
The reason why people use drugs and alcohol isn't because they don't think it's bad for them, it's because if you're struggling with mental illness or you have poor mental health, you will do just about anything to quiet this thing down. That's the reason why I did it. I saw what alcoholism did to my mom, but by the time that my depression and my anxiety progressed to the point that it, it had gotten to, I did not care. I would have done anything, and that's what I did. And then I kept turning back to it. I turned back to it so much that eventually my solution became my problem. If we take the money that's gonna be allocated towards DARE and we start focusing it on better practices or better programs to promote good mental health with children, then we will see a decrease in drug use. The three reasons people use drugs is to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. If we can teach people or young people how to not look for those things and how to deal with life on life's terms from the get-go, then they're not gonna wanna look for those things through drugs and alcohol. They'll have their own practices to promote good mental health. Just to let you know, this is the reason why more and more schools are starting to teach meditation to kids. More and more parents, like myself, are teaching their children about meditation and mindfulness. I practice mindfulness on a regular basis with my eight-year-old son because I'm trying to promote good mental health. He's learning how to deal with emotions in a healthy way so that way they don't build up for him later on and he feels like he needs to turn to alcohol and drugs. Granted, he's only eight years old and we still, you know, the test of time will tell us if he turns to drugs or alcohol, but I'm promoting good mental health at a young age. So what we need to do is quit prescribing opioids left and right. We need to start teaching our children more about having good mental health. But lastly, we need to do something about treating the people who are already addicted. It is very sad that there isn't nearly enough health coverage for people who have addictions. And part of it is because we're looking at them as criminals, just to be honest. We need to start treating people with addiction the same way we treat people with any other illness. And that also means that we're not deterring them from getting the health care that they need or denying them because they have a pre-existing condition. So these are the things that will actually benefit people who have addictions. These are the things that will actually help people not become addicted in the first place. So at the end of the day, what we're dealing with is some people, some people really high up in the administration who are not educated about addiction at all. They're not following the studies, they're not following the research, or they just don't believe what the, the research and the studies are telling them. We need to change the way that we're doing these preventative methods. In my course for addiction on the rewiredsoul.com, I go through this whole process. I talk about the risk factors. I talk about the different sections of people and why they start turning to drugs and alcohol in the first place. I talk about genetics. I talk about age. I talk about mental health. These are the things that the administration needs to be educated on so we can properly start teaching our youth on how not to use drugs in the first place. The president was right when he said, if people don't try drugs, they won't get addicted to drugs, but we need to work on, on a better method so people don't wanna try drugs in the first place. And the D.A.R.E. program is not the answer. So thanks for watching. I wanna hear what you have to say. Did you try the D.A.R.E. program? Did you go through it? Was it effective for you? What do you think about what the president's saying about the opioid crisis? Leave comments in the description below. Share this with your friends. Let everybody know what's going on, what the conversation is about the opioid epidemic so you can start taking action in your cities and your communities. All right, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe, and I will see you next time.